Oh hi, it's Jochen Haydn and I'm back with the Desert Wolf vs. Werewolf Ace, War in the Pacific Campaign. This is Scenario 1 with Stacking Limits and today we're going to watch the 1st of December, 1942. I can't believe it guys, we're in December 1st, 1941, the last month of 1941. Wait, it's 42, 1942. Man, December 1942, a year into the war almost. I think we're going to have a lot of action here today. I think Solomon's is going to be wild. Uh, especially down near, near Tulagi. The, car uh, the American carrier should be in position now. Reacting to... Okay, sub stuff. A lot of subs here. All right. It does appear that the invasion fleet did make it to Nauru, if I'm seeing this correctly. I-172 is getting pinned down pretty hard here. Oh, something's happening there. What's going on at, uh, what's going on at, uh, Tulagi? Okay, no night bombing, which is expected with the moonlight. You hear that? Something just sank. I'm guessing it's one of the Japanese ships that were damaged last last turn. Okay, there's the R's. The R-class battleships are, are doing their short bombardment of Naru. So let's see how this goes. I think they're gonna they're gonna do a lot of damage here. Uh yeah. Destroyed an Oscar on the ground and plastered the base. I mean, like, leveled it. Fair amount of casualties inflicted. Not bad. Not bad. Okay, we got the light cruisers coming in for a, for a try at this. Are you noticing how the Japanese are not firing back? I think that's because they are so broken and so out of supply... That they don't even have ammo to fire back. Because normally we would see the Japanese return fire. But they don't even have anything to do it with right now. That's how busted up they are. Alright, here we go. Here we go. Here comes the actual invasion. Pre-invasion stuff right here. Wow. Honestly, that's a shockingly low amount of casualties for um, unloading over the beach. I was expecting more than that. That's not bad. I wonder if those divisions are 100% prepped. We'll have to look at that. On Naru, that's a that's really good. What did you see? Bibi Musashi reported at Rabal. I don't buy it. You saw that, right? We'll have to look at that in the uh, in combat reporter. But I don't know. I don't think the Musashi's at Rabal. I hope it's not. Yikes! Like scary. Okay, uh, more more stuff at uh, Naru and more unloading. I'm sure. Naval movement, let's see. Huh. No naval combat. That's weird. Oh, okay. Japanese uh, recon plane was shot down. Okay, oh boy, guys, it's gonna it's gonna be brutal for the Japanese new Tulagi, I think.
Oh, yeah. They're gonna get beat up. RO60, man. That poor thing. <laughs> that poor thing. RO67 reported hit. Hmm. It does appear. Well, that sucks. It does appear that he's reinstituted his his cat his uh PBYs at a sand pit. Okay, we got some zeros sweeping over uh, north of Chikyang. Oscars. I'm going to try to get through the China stuff pretty fast because I want to see some activity out there in the South Pacific. Uh, down near the Guadalcanal. So I'll only stop to really analyze it if it's really noteworthy. These sweeps aren't very important to look at. Oh boy, speaking of sweeps, we're going to see a lot of sweeps here. Kusai getting a good sweep in the and look at this all those fighters at Kusai don't take the bait Alright, just get through all of these sweeps because they're, you know, not much to talk about. Alright, here, here's some bombers now. Decent numbers. You guys ever notice that the first raid in a hex is really good, and the subsequent ones are not? Right, the first one had double this. I've always found that strange. It's like the first one catches everybody off guard. And then the subsequent bombing attacks do very little damage because I think everybody's already hunkered down and they're expecting it. 81 Sonyas. Come on. And that's all they do. 14 casualties. What a waste. I hate Sonyas. Okay. Now, see, this raid's pretty big, right? But I guarantee you they don't do as much damage as that first one that we saw, despite the fact that there's a lot of twin engine bombers here. See? They don't do nearly as much. It's like you you only get one good attack per day and the rest kind of taper off after that. With all these bombers, I'm wondering if he's actually going to attempt an attack here. Oh, gotta get more Sonyas in there. Hmm. Okay. So we got the carriers operating another strike package on Roy Namur. Let's see what they get done here. Alright, so these are the guys that are escorting the uh, transports towards Kusai. So we'll see what they let's see what they accomplish here. Very little. Wow. Maybe it's the weather. They destroy one aircraft on the ground, and a 102 Dauntlesses only do five runway hits. That's not that great. 
Oh boy. Look at all this. Here we go with the smorgasbord of bombers hitting the unit south of Chrome. Look at these numbers. Desert Wolf, I'm still waiting for you to tell me why your bombers suck so much. Is it the jungle terrain? What is it? This is bad. It hardly even seems worth it to send him if that's all they're going to accomplish. You would think there might be better targets for his bombers than this. They're just not doing anything. I'll tell you what, though. That's a good thing we have these Vengeance Ones. Yep, nothing there. Yeah, they're not doing anything. Finally, they hit something. Jeez. Got B-17s coming into to Lagi. Oh yeah, this is a port strike. Look at this. Nice, nice. Landing barges. Landing barges. Look at this. That's what these LBs are. These are landing barges. And a lot of them are getting obliterated by bomb hits. Let's let's see what all we get out of this. Look at that. Look at <laughs> Oh. Uh why these are even in the port? I have no idea what the point of these are. But hey, we sunk them anyway. They're probably worth at least one point. Lots of lot of landing barges. Okay, Marauders coming in, and what you saw there was a lot of aircraft flying long range cap. That's what that's what this is. Because you didn't see them in animation, but they're there. All right, this is one last one last ditch effort to try to soften up as many Japanese troops as possible before the troops attack. Okay, Kusai Island's now getting hit. Man, where'd the aircraft go? Look at this. It's like they're gone. There was like ninety some odd fighters at Kusai last turn, and now they're gone. Look at this. They're not even hit. Okay, Liberator's going in there and just doing some minor damage now. Alright, uh, good, good softening up here. Oh, these guys coming in here from Lido. I'm really surprised we haven't seen any carrier activity from those guys that passed by Guadalcanal. That were think the Yorktown, the Wasp, the Hornet. Where's their attack at? You would think they'd be hitting all that loose stuff near uh, Tulagi.
Oh, here it is. <laughs> I called it. I knew it was coming. Here it is. Um, it does seem like kind of a light raid, though, but boom. I guess you don't need a lot of a lot of aircraft when you're lobbing 1,000 pounders, right? Jeez. Three 1,000-pound bombs. That's enough to sink a carrier, and this thing's tank, tank, tank has taken four of them. Five of them now. Jesus, done. How's that even still afloat? Unable to locate the target because it's dead. Five 1,000 pound bombs. I sank the Kaga with less. Oh my god, we're still in the AM phase of this air air day. I'll finally get some bombs on target. <sighs> okay, jeez, alright, let's go. It's enough of this. Alright, that was just the AM phase, guys. We still got a PM phase to go. Here we go. And the PBYs begin their relentless assault on the Japanese. RO-60 again! How is there anything left of that thing? These PBYs are just ripping these... Ripping these uh, submarines apart. Look at RO-60 taking all those attacks. Listen, listen. There's Kido Butai, guys. We just spotted it again. It's in the Makassar Strait. That's great. Now we know where it's at. We got what I knew we had about one or two more days to find it. We did. He he obviously does move, move more PBYs into Sampit on Borneo. That's good stuff. this oh okay b17 right on naru he wants to get every little drop out of this look at this every little bit counts right yeah these are good numbers here I was kind of expecting a bit more carrier activity near uh, Tulagi, but I guess there just wasn't a lot of as many ships out to hit that I thought there was. Well. That was active nonetheless. Guys, I think this is going to be a pretty good land combat phase. I, I'm pretty sure that if if what Desert Wolf told me is correct, there should be a shock attack at Naru. All right, guys, let's see. Ah. Uh, the guard's mix brigade has more in it than I thought it would. Okay, the bombardment does yield some, some results there. Okay, bombardment attack at Kunchong, or north, south of it. 
Eh. It's alright. Waste ammo waste ammo over here. Yeah. Not worth it. Bombardment in Burma? Oh, here it is. Guys, what do you think? Are they going to carry the day? Or are they going to get slaughtered? You guys ready? Here we go. What's going to happen? Are we going to win or are we not going to win? Let's find out. Oh! <gasps> No! Whoa! Oh, dang! That did not go well. Oh, man. An entire unit was destroyed. Oh. That did not go well. No. Look at this. I don't think he got enough troops off off the ship. These guys came storming across the, the beach. This is this is like Tarawa levels of real World War II Tarawa levels of, of destruction. Oh man. Oh the beach is littered with poor US Army troops, man. That did not go well. Ooh. I thought he might actually just carry it. I thought those guys would be so jacked up that um, they would just fold over, but they didn't. They didn't at all. Huh. Wow. Those army loss points aren't going to be so pretty for the allies this, uh, this turn. Bunch of subs getting upgraded here. Jeez, a lot of subs. That would explain why we haven't been seeing a lot of allied subs out in the water lately. They're all getting upgraded right now. Look at this. We'll have to look and see what this upgrade is. Alright, come on. Every PT boat too? Hmm. A lot of upgrades here. Not much for reinforcements. Uh, Indian Air Force unit. Man, I can't believe that Naru. That didn't go as well as thought it would. Oh, man. Well, the invasion is on, guys. But day one did not go so great. Let's look at everything here. For today, the Japanese lost 12 aircraft, the Allies 6. Uh, a lot of these Japanese aircraft were lost on the ground here. You can take a look at the numbers for yourself. Nothing particularly crazy on either side. Uh, looking at the pilot losses, though, we do see that there is, seems to be a higher proportion of Allied aircraft pilots killed per turn. Uh, at six aircraft were lost, and four of those had casualties. That's like a two-thirds casualty rate, 67%. Army lost points, also not so great for the Allies this turn. 50 Allied lost points versus 11 for the Japanese. And that's probably going to be all those poor U.S. Army troops slaughtered on the beaches of Nauru. Alright, uh, ship sunk this last turn. I don't believe this is very telling because we saw a couple of these guys go down. But we're still not accounting for the ships that were sunk by the boat fighters last turn. And all the landing barges that we saw killed at Tulagi. Uh, maybe they'll show up later. I don't know. The Allies went up an additional 67 political points this turn. And you may wonder, well, where did the other 17 come from? My guess is that he withdrew a unit, like a, a, a fighter squadron or something that has a, a W by the name. You get political points if you withdraw these units uh, early. 
So that's probably where the extra 17 points came from. For the turn, the uh, the Japanese went up 11 additional points, but their win ratio stays uh, at 1.619. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and fire up the old combat reporter, and we'll take a look at some of the notable activities that we saw during the last turn. I'll be right back. Okay, so we're back. Let's start looking at what we've got here. So... We'll start with some ASW activities near Naru. The I-172 intercepted the invasion convoys and its miscellaneous uh, supporting ships, not once but twice, and they were fought off by the escorts. We also had the R-Class battleships and the Honolulu and Phoenix bombarding Naru. The R's did okay. They inflicted some decent casualties. The light cruisers did moderate stuff, nothing Nothing crazy there. Uh, for ground, obviously, this was a Japanese bombardment attack, which is very normal when you come ashore. Uh, the defending people will fire. Uh, now, what wasn't so great was the uh, American shock attack did not go well, as you can see. Um, one entire unit was destroyed outright. This 34th Combat Engineer Regiment, uh, Part 3, was completely wiped out and that was pretty pretty devastating I would think and if you look at these numbers um, the Allies had barely enough assault value to make anything happen here you would want at least three times this number of what the uh, Japanese have and look at the assault odds Fort level 4 1 to 13 it just did not go well and I have some information as to why that possibly didn't go well and I'll get to that when we do our, our round robin in just a little bit all right we also had some bombardment attacks in in China and Burma nothing nothing crazy there uh, and then look at this <laughs> combat reporter doesn't like this hex for some reason it's putting it out here in outer space but we had some pre-invasion gunfire and such Interestingly enough, the the um, the the Japanese didn't really fire too much at all. This a little bit did, but not not a lot. And then these numbers are actually pretty low. The ground losses during the unloading was was very low, and I went to check it out, and here's why. Both both these units had their future objectives at 100, so they had 100% planning. So that means that their losses coming ashore were very low. And that's, that was good for the Allies, at least. Air attacks. We saw uh, Tulagi get hit by B-17s hitting the port and took out a ton of these landing barges. We also saw SBDs attack a ship near Tulagi. Voynamor was hit by SBDs from the carriers. Kusai was hit by B-24s. And then we had a bunch of miscellaneous attacks in Nauru and a lot of stuff in China and Prome. Uh stuff we've been seeing every turn and i gotta say these bombing activities near prome are just not really yielding a lot of results we're not seeing a lot of losses inflicted on the japanese here at all they may be getting disrupted but they're not losing any units to this i i just don't really understand why the the bombing is so ineffective here okay taking a look at signet report stuff nothing really noteworthy on the uh, radio transmissions here. We see that the Japanese are moving an air support unit to Babo, which is an oil uh, Producing center in Dutch New Guinea right here Has a little bit of oil to it. I don't really know why he's moving a unit there, but that's fine And then located um, a couple of things here that might be worthwhile uh, a cheeky detachment we knew that that's at Naru already um, we see that another fragment of a Japanese division is one hex off from this one here in China. It, as you recall, uh, we're moving this way. The Japanese are towards this hex. Apparently, the unit here is uh, part A of the 25th Infantry Division. That's what that is, per our SIGINT. Ops report, there's a few things I want to talk about here. Let's talk about the Coast Watchers. I don't know if you guys saw this. Or I, I I called it out 
um, during the replay, but we have some conflicting Coast Watch stuff, and this is where it's really hard to read. Right, we have one Coast Watch report that says the ball is reported as empty, and then we have another one down here that says the battleship Musashi is reported at the ball. Um, that's insane if that's actually the case because. If Musashi's in port here, I can't think of a better thing to do than to move these carriers up to about here and port strike that thing. I, I don't know if that's actionable intelligence or not, but it is tantalizing to even think that the Musashi might be within striking range of carriers. About 20,000 pound bombs ought to do that thing in pretty good. So I don't know how accurate that is, but it's something to at least think about. Okay, combat report. Again, we see... Uh, a lot of mentions of the Japanese landing barges being destroyed near Tulagi. Repairs. We see that the battleship Maryland is done at Seattle. I don't think I can click on it. I'll take you there. The Maryland, which I believe is a Colorado class battleship. This should have 16 inch guns. Yep, it is. It says Maryland class, but it's not. It's really a Colorado class, but I think they call it Maryland class because this Maryland had a different upgrade path than the actual, um, whatchamacallit, the, uh, the Colorado did. That's why I think they call it a separate class, even though it's really a Colorado class. Well, that's ready. And it's just sitting there with North Carolina, so I'd like to see these guys get on the road here and do something soon. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, subs. Man, these poor rowboats out near Naru are getting beat up. Look at this. RO 60, 67, 60, 60, 67. RO 67, RO 60 report is hit. These PBYs are ripping and tearing up these Japanese subs. You gotta you gotta wonder like how much longer can it keep them out there before it's to pull them back. And also, we see that the bulk of the American sub fleet right now appears to be in for repairs and or refits. At Pearl and Midway. Those are his, some of his uh, primary sub bases. Let's take a look at that. So over at Midway, we've got 18 American subs down for some sort of repair or upgrade, right? And over at Pearl, we have a bunch, a bunch of other subs. And I, I'm assuming these are some sort of radar upgrade or anti-aircraft upgrade. Something like that's going down right now, but... A lot of American subs are out of commission for the time being, and that would explain why I haven't been seeing a lot of sub activity for a while. See, there's no American subs anywhere to be found. I think he pulled them all in to be upgraded to whatever it is that they're getting upgraded to. I'm not entirely sure what that upgrade is right now. I'm not an expert on subs, so a lot of them are out of commission, and I definitely want to point that out to you. Okay, so I'm done talking about the... Um, the ops and combat report. So I think it's time we can just go ahead and, and stay here and we'll take a look at the overall situation. And we'll start here in China. So in China, um, the big story I think we need to talk about right now is here. The Japanese drive is here now, right? And they've got at least three divisions, two to three divisions here. The only thing that I see that might be concerning on the allied side is the level of disruption now has spread to all the units so the Japanese bombing is really starting to have an effect here and it's disrupting these units heavily I think we needs to start poking around and, and prodding a bit and seeing you know how well he could do here it's only rough terrain so it's times two these units are heavily disrupted it may be time for him to start acting on this hmm. something else I want to show you is this at first I thought this was a mistake or like a misclick, like Desert Wolf screwed this up. These units were very close to moving into the hexes that they were going into. So here, here, and here. Right? Um, and initially, I thought he wanted to get in here to, to disrupt these units. But uh, I actually went back and I, and I talked to Desert Wolf. And I said, hey, dude, what's up with this? Did you screw this up? Is this a mistake? And he said, no, this is not a mistake. He actually stopped these guys from moving and started them again. And when I asked him why, he said, well, it wasn't a mistake. I don't want these units going into these hexes here while the Japanese units are still in there because they're not going to be able to really disrupt the supply because you'll only close one hex side, not all of them. You need to close up basically all of them to stop the supply. 
So what he wants to do here is he either wants these units to stay in place or all move into here. So it's a win-win for the allies either way. One, all the units move in here. Then these units come in behind and disrupt the supply lines. Okay? Because then the, all the hex sites, they'll own them. Or he sees that they're moving and he stops these units in place to guard his supply line. And that's good too because all these units that are now tied up here blocking these ones are not in this hex attacking here. So he wants we're a way to see them moving but he doesn't want them to actually move until the either the japanese units clear out or if they don't he's just going to keep them always moving to make the japanese stop and guard these hexes and i really think that's a brilliant move i would have never thought to do that myself but that's the next level thinking that desert wolf exhibits he's always looking ahead at that kind of stuff he's he's fainting right here making we're away think he's going to come in and close them behind him so we're away will either stop and 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 put units here to guard against it or he won't and he'll move them all in here in which case the allies can close them behind and disrupt the supply lines so either way the allies are winning here pretty cool stuff but we need to see what happens in this hex i think we needs to be a little more aggressive and start pushing the pace here uh, especially with the level of disruption that the allies have he doesn't know that we know it but he needs to start testing the waters a little bit more Okay, in Burma, the only thing that's really hot right now is this hex south uh, east of Prome. It's getting hit mercilessly by allied bombers, but the bombers don't seem to be doing much. They very well could be disrupting the units here, but they're not inflicting a lot of casualties as we've seen from the combat report data. So I don't really know what's going to happen here in Burma right now. It seems like a big stalemate to me. So I'm hoping in the next couple turns I get more clarity as to what the big plan is here. I, okay, I know what the big plan is. He wants to retake Burma from the Japanese, but I don't see him able to do it right now with the stacking limits being what they are. He can't concentrate the force he needs to do it. So we'll have to wait and see what happens here. So, check this out. It looks like he swapped out a unit or did something here, but these PBYs now have two aircraft. And with those two aircraft, look what we spotted. I'll be uh, willing to bet that this is actually the Keto Butai right here. Uh, it may look like the numbers are small or the composition is incorrect, but they barely got any spotting on them at all because there's only two aircraft to do it. But I'm pretty sure this is the Keto Butai. So what it looks like to me is that Wurwei came down to the Java Sea and now he's going to hook a left. And head to the Makassar Strait, Celibacy, and uh, potentially down to Truck to Refuel. And from truck, you can bet he's going to deploy against this gaggle out here. He knows what's going on now, right? There's been enough movement. There's been enough recon that Weirway knows exactly what's happening. He sees this. He sees this. And now he sees this down here. So where he goes from here is anybody's guess. He could head straight towards in a weak talk and try to disrupt the northern flank. He could head into the middle part here and deal with Naru. Or he could head due south. And get involved in the Solomons. But there's definitely a timer on this whole operation right now. Um, with Desert Wolf's carriers split into two uh, sections. They are not powerful enough to take on the Kiru Butai in its entirety. So we'll keep eyes on this for as long as possible. Hopefully till about there. Right? Maybe two more days of visibility on the Kiru Butai. And from there, we'll have to do some math and figure out at eight hexes a day, how long will it take them from the last known position to get the truck, plan on at least one day in truck to refuel, and then out into combat. And from truck, he can full speed basically anywhere in this range over here and it'd be disruptive. So the, the timer is on for all these operations because these guys are on the way. We can take a look down in the Coral Sea. Uh, we do have... Um, these guys, this is supply that's probably going to come in to follow up to these guys here. These guys will be at, uh, Tagula. It says Tagula, but it's heading towards, and that can't be right. What is this? These guys are going to Rosso Island, but it says Tagula, and it says do not unload. He'll probably shift it in a turn. So, I don't know, maybe two turns on these guys. These guys are going to Rosso Island, and they need about two turn, a turn in a, in a day 
I turn in a couple hours to get to Russell. Unless he's got these all backwards. I don't know what's going on here. But uh, two more days and these two islands will be invaded by the Australians. And now Weirway does see them coming. You see that? We have detection on these guys. He doesn't have detection on these, but it doesn't matter. The, the secret's out. The Allied carriers here, the Wasp, Saratoga, and Lexington, are also spotted. These two raiding destroyers, which didn't get anything done this last turn, are spotted. And the landing force to Endeni is also spotted. So these guys are now bringing in engineers to Endeni. A lot of them are already unloaded. And you can bet that this base will start getting developed really quickly and terraformed like only the Allies can do. And maybe he can move bombers in here to start supporting a conquest of the Solomons. But yeah, and Denny operation is going well. I'll tell you what didn't go so well was the day one invasion of Nauru. Um, the Allies hit the beach with over 400 assault value and they're down to this now. The 25th Infantry Division, at least this fragment of it, is completely disabled. 24th ID, um, which still has quite a bit of, of um, supporting units still loaded onto the transports, is badly damaged. You can see more than half of their unit, the rifle squads, which do the bulk of the fighting, are damaged here or disabled. Uh, this was a very difficult landing. And I talked to Deswolf about this because I'm like, hey, man, what happened here? And he said he screwed up the landing. And I said, well, how, how do you screw up the landing? I mean, you don't really control it. And what he told me was um, what would have been preferable is if he didn't unload with only half of the turn. So what, he was out here last turn, right? So he had to spend at least one movement uh, pulse to get to Naru, which expend ops points. So now only the other half of the naval movement turn allowed these guys to unload so not enough troops got it onto the beach in, in in half the turn if he had gone into this hex one day and started unloading on the 2nd of december more troops would have got onto the beach in time and it wouldn't have been such a slaughter but i thought the japanese were way more disrupted than they actually were they put up a great fight and they caused a lot of damage to these these units and one the combat en engineer regiment got almost completely wiped out. So now what needs to happen is we have a whole day's turn to unload a lot more troops here. And hopefully they get enough assault value on the beach here to overcome the Japanese. And what needs to happen now is we're, Desert Wolf needs to send every available aircraft, ship, anything that's got guns or bombs needs to hit this island. So no bomb in Kusai, no bomb in anything. Every single aircraft needs to, to batter... This garrison down to nothing um, in time for the next day's combat or else these guys are done they're they're done for because uh, they don't have a lot of supply they don't have a lot of support they don't have a lot of the stuff they need so they're in danger of getting wiped out and completely repulsed so uh, desert wolf needs to throw up everything he's got so the r class battleships that are here need to come back uh, whatever escorts here that have guns need to get involved. Um, airstrikes from Tavitwea, Abamama, Macon, everything. Anything that can lob a bomb needs to be focused on Naru and pound that place into a pulp. And then hopefully he can rescue this. If not, he's down to lose a lot more troops here. I really thought the invasion of Naru would go better. I thought with all the pounding that the Japanese had taken, that they would be completely just like mush but they're definitely not if we take a look at what they were able to put together here they have they had even at that point 373 assault value worth of troops available the allies did have more but when you throw in the shock attack the disruption that they had uh, and the fact that there's size four forts here um you can see that the, what the adjusted did here it just completely flipped the table on the allies and they took these casualties so yeah a tough day i thought it would have gone better but tomorrow's another day and i look forward to seeing what happens so i'm gonna go ahead and end this video now because i could go around the map here and look at all this uh, this stuff on the periphery but i think we need to focus our attention here right now because this is where all the action is at so uh, i hope you enjoyed today's activity we can look forward to more activity at N naru these carriers doing something up here 
these ships coming into Kusai, they're still on the way. But I'm wondering if uh, maybe uh, Desuwolf is going to get cold feet on this because he has way more troops available for Naru and the garrison's smaller here. And they got sliced and diced. So I don't see a smaller landing force here doing a lot better. So he's got about a day to call this off before it's too late. And then don't forget, we've got landings happening here on Rossel and Tugula in about two turns. We have American carriers down here operating, so anything is possible down here. We got a lot. We got a lot of stuff happening, and then we have Big Boy KB looming on the horizon. Going to be in action here soon. So boy, this really got exciting quick. I hope you're enjoying it, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.